Good morning and welcome back. It's now 814. Many people have concerns about staying healthy during this COVID-19 pandemic. Those with chronic conditions like high blood pressure, they might face an increased risk for severe complications if they contract the virus. Joining me now with more is Mayo Clinic cardiologist, Dr. Jordan Ray. Dr. Ray, thank you so much for talking with us this morning. Thank you for having me. Talking specifically about high blood pressure, how many Americans are affected by this and what risk is presented? I think it's important to understand that high blood pressure is probably one of the, it is the most common cardiovascular disease in the country. Uh, and it affects a large group of the population. Uh, and we're learning that patients with high blood pressure and other cardiovascular diseases are going to potentially experience more severe complications from this virus. One of the more important things that we wanna stress is it's very important to focus on your blood pressure and maintain its treatment accurately uh, by continuing your heart medications. Uh, there's a lot of literature coming out about some of the modes of spread for the virus and its impact on maybe some of the mechanisms for high blood pressure medicines. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think there's sufficient evidence to suggest that we should be stopping these medications. And as a healthcare provider, I'm very worried that a lot of patients are receiving, receiving some of these signals and stopping their medicines uh, either prematurely or without the advice of a me medical or healthcare professional. Yeah, you know, that is one concern that we've been hearing about. Uh, the question being, could blood pressure lowering medications make those with COVID-19 more sick? Yeah, I don't think there's enough evidence to support that. Uh, the American Heart Association, and a lot of top cardiologists, we've, we've looked at this data coming out of China to make that understanding because there is, there is a link between the enzymes that are associated with some of these medications and possibly how the virus is used to incorporate itself into the host. Uh, but when we've looked at the patients who are infected, it looks as more like the patients having an inherent cardiovascular disease are at risk, not necessarily just because they're on these medications. And I would worry as a cardiologist if patients are misinterpreting these signals and prematurely or inadvertently stopping these medications, they may actually be making things worse by increasing their blood pressure prior to their exposure. All really great information. For those of... Uh us who do suffer from high blood pressure and those who do not. This is a very stressful time for just about everyone uh, involved in this pandemic. But let's talk about over-the-counter medications. What should people know about over-the-counter medications when going to the drugstore? This is a great question because usually this time of year is it's cold and flu season uh, and this is a, a prime time for healthcare providers to educate their patients about a lot of the over-the-counter over the counter decongestants and medications. For patients with high blood pressure, really the best fever reducer they should be taking is Tylenol. Uh, other medications like ibuprofen, naproxen, or some of the uh, stimulant decongestants uh, can actually raise their blood pressure and counteract the effect of the blood pressure medications they're on. Uh, so there are a couple of brand names that are out there that have mainly Tylenol and some non-stimulant decongestants, uh, and they almost always have some type of heart on the box that talk about safe for blood pressure. Uh, so it's very important as consumers are going out to look for these things, they should avoid the traditional what we call NSAIDs, these non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like naproxen and ibuprofen Aleve, migrate more towards Tylenol or other medicines that have specifically said are safe for blood pressure. And when we talk about a fever suppressant, you're recommending Tylenol. At what point should somebody start implementing ty Tylenol if they have a fever? Uh, that's a good question, and I, I think it's important to understand that uh, the treatment of fever should happen because a lot of the adverse effects of the fever, so the myalgias, the uh, the delirium, the aches, those kind of sensations are, are uncomfortable and very important to, to treat as they come. Uh, I would probably kind of defer to an infectious disease specialist on should they take it prophylactically, but I think as as the fever comes, using Tylenol to break the fever is very important. If you have muscle aches and pains from the viral illness, using Tylenol is very important. Uh, and then it's always important with Tylenol to make sure that you're watching the label and make sure that you take only the amount for a 24-hour period that you should be taking. And if you're able to go for a walk, 
that also is a great natural stress reliever. Yeah, very much so. Dr. J, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us this morning. We really appreciate it. Of course, absolutely. For access to high blood pressure tools and resources, you can go to heart.org.